Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Tuesday, March 19th, 2019. Hello out there, folks. It's been a long one today. Let's get right into it here at the GrandSolarMinimum.com where we list every article that we cover in tonight's show. We also have the video embedded so you can play it along and go through the menu as if we were uh, reading the show back to you. But anyway, let's start off with some space weather news. Checking out our solar wind speeds, sitting at a 401.4 kilometers per second and a density of about 6.7, so not much change from earlier this morning. And take a look at that alignment. And we've had KP of 1 over the last 24 to 48 hours, so wouldn't be surprised to see a possibility, especially with some geomagnetic unrest coming our way. And right on schedule, here we see the KP indices now at a three, and that's a 24 hour max as well. Uh, very weak activity for any kind of solar activity. Uh, and we're talking about sunspot number 2735. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this bad boy. Not very big. Sunspot number 13 uh, grew a little bit as it turned earth facing, but as you see, it's losing some of its lackluster now as we speak. So we will remain at 53 days without a sunspot. And let's take a look at the SDO in motion. And we'll get a bit zoomed in a little bit on that sunspot AR27. There we go, right there. Uh, again, nothing to worry about as far as any solar flares. Nothing that's saying we could get one as a possibility. We saw a C-class flare not too long ago as well. So watching a couple regions here as Earth facing turning away, a little bit of activity starts to flare up here. Could we be witnessing the birth of something else? Anyway, the solar wind. Uh, we'll be arriving as well later today as we have barely increased whatsoever from previous solar wind speeds earlier today. But it is on the incline and looking over here in the farther, further eastern part of the limb of the sun, we do not see any indications that we will be dealing with any kind of new sunspots. Uh, even looking at this right now, still questionable and we will just have to watch these locations that are earth facing right now at the current time. Uh, KP indices are picking up, so it is a possibility that we could see a minor G1 uh, geomagnetic uh, activity type storm for tomorrow. But uh, again, that's a low chance. We're slowly climbing up to 3 uh, KP right now. We'll have to monitor throughout the uh, evening and into the morning to see if a storm actually does happen. And again, G1, we talked about these yesterday or, or the other day on Space Weather, how we typically see more um, geomagnetivity, geomagnetic activity in the month of March. It's very typical. Uh, there's been studies done on it, and of course in September and October near the near the equinoxes. So good correlation. We covered it yesterday in our solar update. Let's get to some GSM World News now. We're doing things a little different tonight. So we have broke the show up into three segments. Uh, this is the beginning of the first segment of the show tonight, GSM World News. We will play a brief 15-second uh, advertisement of our channel, and then we will move into the next section. So don't be alarmed when you see Mari talking about the website and where to like us. It is just part of the new format. As of tonight, we are starting breaking up the live shows. We'll post them live as they, as they stream, but at the end of the night, we'll start editing the videos to where they'll be into three to four different parts. That way you can listen to it on your time. Instead of an hour at a time, we're going to try to keep them between 15 and 25 minutes at a time. All right, getting on with the stories here. Farm Belt floods dealt another blow to the ag uh, situation right now. And according to this article here, severe flooding across the Farm Belt continued this weekend, swamping farms and shutting down roads, railways, grain elevators, and processing sites. Emergencies have been declared in several Midwestern states. Total damage has been yet tallied, but it's possible Congress could eventually step in, especially as lawmakers are already working on final disaster relief packages to address damage from the 2018 hurricanes and wildfires. Now, this also includes the flooding that we uh, experienced last year in the spring. Remember, last March wasn't so kind to us. We had quite a bit of uh, nor'easters to wrap up the year. 
and just heavy rain across the south. We flooded in the Midwest. Um, we reported on the crop situation for oh, a few weeks into April, into the first week of May, until we started seeing people get into their fields finally by mid-May and early June, which is really cutting it close, guys. But again, pointing out an article about uh, farming, the concerns that we have with this weather, uh, with the new food safety leader finally in place, the Agriculture Department is looking to advance several regulatory chances or changes this year, including new salmonella standards and pork processing inspections. So on top of the fact that they're going to see delayed crops, they're going to see uh, not a healthy yield, and I mean by size, now they're going to have stricter regulations on the standards on how the food gets sold. So we're facing two challenges. The challenge of keeping up with uh, supply and demand, the quantity, the quality, and now regulations. It just makes me wonder how much, um, how much are going to make the cut in some of these puny, because we did cover this a few days ago where um, customers are now requesting the odd shaped smaller fruits and vegetables because the price is closer to what they remember paying for uh, produce than what they're looking at today. U.S.-Brazil trade will be on the agenda Tuesday when Donald Trump and Jair Bolsonaro meet at the White House. Influential Republican senators want Trump to press the new Brazilian leader on expanding market for access for U.S. wheat. Um, but the biggest thing is the aid that is so desperately needed. And what I find very, very uh, alarming and troubling is that we need billions of dollars to hit target goals to get things back to normal from last year's damage. And this year so far, you know, we're talking about catastrophic flooding. Mari did an excellent piece, but look at this guy. These, these are the highways here in the fields. Roads are being cut off. Here's another article that kind of highlights some of the dollar total so far in the early uh, going here. Look at this. Nima said the current public impact of flooding in Nebraska is around $205 million, and the private impact is over $59 million. So $205 million, that's over almost $300 million. And this is the early uh, going here as far as assessing this. There are also three known fatalities, according to the agency, one being the farmer who was killed trying to help someone, another from someone who was carried away as they drove into high water, an 80-year-old woman who couldn't be rescued, and another person is missing from the Spencer Dam. The agency said there has also been a $400 million impact to livestock, so we're almost at a billion dollars just in one state. One billion dollars, and this is just the beginning of their assessments. FEMA individual assistance will be available to residents of Nebraska for the second time in state history. The first was in 2011. A total of 65 counties of the 74 cities have issued emergency declarations. The state will also submit an expedited request for federal disaster declaration from President Donald Trump. We'll leave the link in our article here at thegrandsolarminimum.com. So a billion dollars in the first bonafide, I don't know, massive storm, this bomb cyclone, the way it hit, the snow, the rain, the flooding, everything, the damage. Um, you know, you also think back, and this is another thing I want to look up too. We haven't did a follow-up on this. That tornado that was on the ground for an hour and 16 minutes. Haven't heard about that, have you? It's kind of funny how when it happened, it was mentioned in the news once, and then... Several YouTube channels, I'm sure. Several Reddit topics were probably talking about it. But now it's gone. No one's talking about it. How much damage did that tornado do? That's a long time being on the ground. 78 miles it traveled. 55 miles per hour were some of the speeds that it reached while traveling those 78 miles. An hour and 16 minutes on the ground. So, you know, we haven't even factored up the damage that's been done from that storm still. 
I haven't heard. I'd like to know if anybody has an idea what that would be, that number. Um, that would be great to know as well. I'm sure we'll do the research. But we're early going, guys, and we haven't seen but maybe two big storms. And we're probably totaling close to $2 billion, if not more, in damage. Um, and and the, the damage across the south might be a little more widespread just because of how far this tornado went. Um, but again, why is this happening? This rapid change in weather. And I can tell you, it was 63 degrees here in upstate New York on Friday. And some rain showers moved in. And by the afternoon, evening, we were dropping into the 40s. So what felt like a great spring day. Uh, the next morning I woke up and I was uh, driving to work in snow flurries and high winds and temperatures barely above 32 degrees. And that's nothing compared to what's happening in places like Nebraska, the bomb cyclone, the bizarre hour and 16 minute tornado. Uh, this is all indications of unstable situations in our atmosphere. Uh, look, guys... I can tell you this, this ain't climate change. This is weather. Because if this was climate change, then we wouldn't continue to see tornadoes reoccurring in the spring, severe wise. And we wouldn't continue to see snow during the winter months. If this was climate change, it would be sunny and hot right now and snowing in July. That's climate change. That's when the climate changes. We're seeing an increase in severe weather because it's cyclical. There's so many cycles right now, too, that are lining up with this, that this is what's happening. It's nature. It's Mother Nature. The sun drives the climate. That's what we're saying here, guys. Pretty much. Uh, death toll in Mozambique. Mari covered this in uh, a part of the video today. I'm just going to briefly touch base. The president of Mozambique said Monday, March 18, 2019, that the number of people killed by tropical cyclone Adai could exceed a thousand. It made landfall around 2330 UTC on March 14th, close to the city of, uh, I think it's Beria, population over a half million, with speeds to 104 miles per hour, central pressure of 960. Uh, guys, check out our solar update from this morning. Mari does uh, a report on the damage and what's happening in this region, but I wanted to bring it up tonight just in case if some of you haven't seen the update from this morning or earlier this afternoon, I should say, uh, we'll leave a link also on our website. Severe tropical cyclone Trevor hits Queensland, 11.8 inches of rain, uh, 124 mile an hour gusts have been reported. Australia getting hit again, heavy rain, historic rain. It says here it made landfall at 655 UTC on March 19th. Category three was the strength. Winds were in excess of 124 miles per hour, were reported at far north Queensland, and more than tw almost 12 inches of rain overnight. So less than 24 hours, we get 12 inches of rain. According to local media reports, entire communities were put into lockdown at 1300 local time. March 18, with emergency sirens sounded to alert residents to seek shelter until it was safe to come out. A little freaky there. While Trevor started weakening after making landfall, meteorologists are urging residents to take caution as strong winds, gusts, and heavy rains are possible and expected to continue in its passage over the land. Trevor is expected to exit into the Gulf of Carpentera on March 20th and then quickly re-intensify in the Gulf later this week, possibly reaching a Category 4 strength. Cyclones in the Gulf are notoriously erratic, and so the forecast track and intensity may change a lot between now and then, says Adam Morgan, BOM senior meteorologist. And take a look at this bad boy motion. Wow. I can just tell by the cloud signatures and the definition of the spirals of this storm right now. You wait till it gets back over the Gulf. Intensifying indeed. Massive storm here, folks. Thanks to the watchers for putting the information together for us and reporting on this. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't hear about this storm today on the news. And I watch the news every day. Deadly earthquake here in Leboque, 
Indonesia shall earthquake registered by the USGS as a M5.5 hit Mount Rajani in Indonesia 707 UTC on March 17, 2019, triggering deadly landslides at the Tuakilip waterfall in, Bayan, in the Bayan district. The quake hit about of a depth of 14.7. Uh, they're reporting it as a 5.8 in some spots. According to the statement released by the Meteorological Meteorolo Meteorology, Climatology, and Geophysics Agency, the quake caused a large landslide and killing several people, trapping about 40. There were about 40 tourists affected by the landslide. Most of the victims were Malaysians and domestic tourists. Uh, the Regional Disaster Migration Agency and the Northern Lombok Health Agency dispatched four ambulances to the scene, as well as medical and rescue personnel to aid and relocate victims. Two people were killed, 44 injured, 32 homes collapsed, and 499 homes were damaged. So you can see the pictures, the aftermath of what had happened here in Lombok. Not a stranger to this kind of uh, uh, events. In fact, this region was one of several badly damaged areas after a series of earthquakes hit the island in July and August of 2018, killing more than 500 people and leaving around 1,500 injured. So unfortunate that we were talking about this region once again before a year anniversary of some intense uh, seismic activity that took the lives of over 500 people just this past summer. And we'll be right back, guys. Stay tuned.